Hello everyone, welcome to New Orleans. Tonight, I'm gonna to be taking you on one of my favorite tours, the haunted tour of the French Quarter. We're gonna talk about murder, mayhem, disease, all that good, juicy stuff. We're gonna learn a little bit of history too. Right behind me is the Andrew Jackson Hotel. It is the site of my favorite ghost story in New Orleans. It wasn't always a hotel. In fact, in the late 1700s, the building that stood there was a boarding school for young boys in the colony. We had two major, devastating fires at the end of the 1700s. The second fire burned the boys' school to the ground, killing, sadly, some of the young inhabitants those little boys never seem to leave. Now, as they are the spirits or energies of children, they are mischievous. People will with regularity call down to the front desk here complaining, saying, hey, yeah, there's these kids on our hall. They're really loud. We can't sleep. Where are their parents? At which point the front desk must explain that no, there are no kids staying here this evening. Now we consider them to be poltergeists. These are mischievous, disruptive ghosts. One woman woke in the middle of the night to report three little boys sitting at the foot of her bed. She said they turned around, they screamed, vanished. But my favorite account comes to us from a couple who stayed at the Andrew Jackson for their honeymoon. They wanted to see ghosts, they were into it, but nothing was happening for them. Finally, they came on a tour much like this to find out more. They get to the stop, they raise their hand to complain and say, we don't think this is real. We stayed in the main house on the top floor and nothing happened to us. About a week later, the company gets an apologetic letter back from this couple because while they hadn't had a supernatural experience during their stay, they noticed in between the pictures of Bourbon Street the night before and coffee and beignets the next morning, a photo of the two of them asleep in their bed taken from ceiling level. Right behind me is Lafitte's blacksmith shop. It is one of the oldest buildings in the French Quarter, dating back to the mid 1700s, and some claim it to be the oldest continually operating bar in the United States. It bears the name of New Orleans' own privateer, pirate captain Jean Lafitte. His brother Pierre was his fence. The Lafitte brothers were instrumental in helping New Orleans to win the Battle of New Orleans against the British at the end of the War of 1812. For this, the pirate Lafitte was rewarded. He was given a pardon by the state of Louisiana. He was also told to leave the state of Louisiana. But it is said that Lafitte left two treasures hidden in the New Orleans area before he went. They say that one is in the swamp, one is somewhere in the French Quarter. Some people believe that that French Quarter treasure lies beneath the bar that now bears the pirate's name. Now, the other part of the legend states that as Lafitte was tying up loose ends, he bade one of his pirates to guard his gold. Well, perhaps he wasn't wise to trust that pirate because it's said that that man immediately began to skim off the top. But Jean Lafitte was no fool. He quickly realized the ruse and started to skim a bit off that pirate's top. He killed the pirate and cursed his spirit to guard the treasure forevermore. It is said that the ghost of this traitorous pirate resides in the fireplace of Lafitte's blacksmith shop. It's said that in pictures, you might catch that pirate spirit's face. And interesting to me, he always looks the same. I've been a tour guide for 10 years. I've had literally thousands of people enter this bar and take this picture. And when they do get a face in the fireplace, it looks like the same man. More interesting to me, sometimes the camera sees a face even when we don't. If you have the function on your phone or on your camera, wherein the camera recognizes faces with a white box or a green box to focus in on the human face, this will often happen in the fireplace of Lafitte's. I even had some younger folks try to take Snapchats in the fireplace, and sure enough, the puppy filter came up. So should you visit Lafitte's blacksmith shop, camera at the ready, check out the fireplace, and don't be surprised if more faces than you expected appear in your photos.
A lot of people call this place the palace. Some people call it the Sultan's house. I think it's a beautiful example of our French Quarter architecture. It's also a murder house. This home was the second home of a wealthy businessman known as Le Pret. But he rented this place out for extra money. Late 1870s, he's approached by a man who is not from New Orleans, tall, dark, and handsome with an accent no one can place. He lays cash on the table and asks if he and his family can rent the home for the summer. And he starts to move in his family, all of whom are very attractive, very well-dressed young men and women. But the neighbors were disappointed because as soon as everyone moves in, the house goes dark. They shutter the windows, hang heavy curtains. Now the neighbors know they're there. They smell food cooking by day and incense burn at night. They hear discordant music coming from the upper floors. Some neighbors even claim to hear screams coming from the house, though no one could say whether they were screams of pain or screams of not pain. However, after a few weeks of this mysterious activity, the house goes silent as well. Once the house goes silent, it starts to smell. Police are called because now it's a public nuisance. First thing the police notice approaching is that the lock on the gate has been busted. The scene they describe upon entering is one of an abattoir slaughterhouse. They'll describe bodies, all dead. In the courtyard, they come upon a hole freshly filled in. Dig down a little bit, they find the body of the young man, Prince. They figure he has been knocked out and buried alive. The house has been seen as haunted ever since. People still claim to smell incense when they go by here late at night. They claim to hear that discordant music and those shrieks and screams. To me, the most interesting account comes to us from the 1950s. By that point, this whole place had been turned into apartments. One was being rented by a young lady who worked on Bourbon Street. She claimed every time she attempted to spend the night in this apartment, she'd round a corner, come face to face with a man she'd never met. She runs to the door, she's checking the lock. It's bolted from the inside just as she's left it. Cannot find the man again. Folks, I bring y'all now to the LaLaurie Mansion right behind me. Some pronounce it La Lurie. Before we get started, just a content warning. This story is rough. It's awful, it's torturous, and it happened. Now to understand about this house, we first have to understand the lady of the house, Delphine. She is said to have lovely, long, dark red hair. She was one of the richest and most eligible bachelorettes at the time. Eventually, she's seen in the boxes of the fine New Orleans theaters cuddled up to the new man in town, Louis LaLaurie. Monsieur LaLaurie had just come from Europe, just graduated from medical school at the bottom of his class. They threw amazing parties here. Everyone wanted to see and be seen at the mansion, but there were rumors. One of the things that people really noticed was that the LaLaurie seemed to own a strangely high number of slaves. Delphine would explain it away if you pressed her, but if you asked too many questions, you were not invited back inside. April 10th, 1834. That day, the LaLauries were entertaining when a fire broke out in the house. Fire brigade shows up, they put out the fire. No harm, no foul, mostly smoke. In the kitchen, huddled in the corner as close to the open window as she could get, nearly passed out from smoke and exhaustion, they would find an older enslaved woman who'd been chained by her ankle to the stove inside. She confesses, she says, I did it. She advised the firemen look in the room above her. Above the kitchen would have been the slave quarters. They found those doors locked. But these are firemen. They have tools. They have axes with them. They will break down the door. The smell which assaults them sends half the brave men running. Stories here diverge. What we know from city papers at the time is that there were at least seven slaves. They are manacled, chained, collared, beaten within an inch of their lives. Other accounts we have on this are even more intense. We hear of what sounds like experiments in pain. People's limbs stretched beyond capacity, tearing muscle and bone. The mob notices, becomes angry, begins crying for the LaLaurie's blood. They can't find them. Now a carriage comes down the street. The mob thinks, thank goodness, perhaps this is the authorities. The LaLaurie's will be arrested, but it was not the police. It was the getaway vehicle. The LaLaurie's escaped. I have a friend whose grandma was born and raised here sweet older lady from a long line of locals and she likes to take walks in the French Quarter. Sometimes she'll walk in this area, but she flat out refuses to pass 
beneath the covered gallery of the house. We had another family, a family of four, who wanted to do a cute, creepy family photo right under the gallery. Um, picture came out fine, they sent it to us. They also said in the email that something had followed them home from the house. Stayed with them for a couple of months, got bored, and left. We said, what followed y'all home? They said, something. Big event, early 1900s. The entire thing was split into an Italian tenement apartment, but it didn't last. One family in particular, husband, wife, and little baby in the crib, had the following story to report. The husband would report waking in the night, looks instinctively at his baby's bed and sees something that should not be there. It's a lady standing over the crib. First he thought it was his wife, but then he realizes, no, his wife's asleep beside him. And anyway, his wife did not have long, dark red hair. This figure runs away. He doesn't chase it. He wants to check on the baby, looks in the crib and screams, Baby's sock had been pulled off, he said, and stuffed, jammed down the baby's throat. It's not a happy place. It's my least favorite place. Folks, that's our tour, and I hope y'all enjoyed it. Again, my name is Hope with French Quarter Phantoms. And I hope from what you've seen, you realize that despite murder and mayhem, fire and floods, the spirit and spirits of New Orleans are not going anywhere. <laughs>